Welcome back everyone to VMware Explorer. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Dave Vellante's here, the whole team is here. We're getting the wall-to-wall -wall coverage, day two. Keith Norby, Worldwide Partner Growth and CTO at NetApp, and Yancey Stefanson, CTO and SVP as well. We have the technical depth, and we got the partner angle. Guys, great to see you, Keith. Notice the purple coats, Vikings colors, well done. Thank you, yeah. We got a real Viking here. Yep, <laughs> go Vikings, we'll get into that later. Welcome back, guys, two CUBE alumni. Look, at you guys at NetApp have been, been doing a lot of work. We've been covering you guys for, you know, since the CUBE, it's been around 15 years, and, and of the storied history of NetApp, everyone knows that story. Um, now it's the hottest time ever to be in infrastructure. I mean, you're seeing a systems revolution, new ways to architect data centers, Gen AI has brought down the gauntlet and laid down the mission. Every single enterprise is looking at refactoring how they foundationalize IT for the next generation. Obviously the, the three build, major building blocks, storage, compute, and networking back in the center of the ring again for all the actions, not just incremental improvements, but significant stuff. So you know, the big conversation is, okay, what do I do? I got object store, I got, I got file, I got multimodal, you know, file types, it's a whole nother revolution coming on. Yeah. And so all the smart system architects and platform engineering, you know, cloud DevOps have done that work on Gen 1 cloud, now you got Gen 2 cloud and you got distributed computing. <coughs> so we're back to the kind of the drawing board in a way. Yeah. What you, how do you guys see the market? Well, the, first, uh, the headline for us at this show, and it's no secret that VMware has really pushed a lot of folks to modernize beyond just the, the dot upgrades of yeah. the past. And VCF is at the center of all that. Uh, at this show, our headline is really save 50 per, up to 50% of your costs with NetApp. No one else at the show is saying that. No one else can touch that. How we deliver that is through a variety of ways that we can opt optimize environments. Yancey will get into some of those details. And we're really announcing you know, three things with the backdrop of our, of our ASA platform as well. And so what we're announcing at the show are really three big things. What, the first is that in v VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation, uh, they're removing the vSAN requirement and we're optimizing our snap mirror to be able to help folks take VCF forward further. So that's really what NetApp has been about is really getting a platform that can help you reduce costs and redeploy that investment into VCF and the places that VMware wants you to go. The second thing is then as you look at how we work with cloud and Azure and AVS, we have new reserve instance capabilities I'll be honest to get into as well. And the third thing is a Cloud Insights is a tool that we have that helps to scan and, and optimize VMware environments, not just for the VM uh, optimization, but also for the storage side. And it's a tool that we use in our partners the services let go to market. And all this is backed with, you know, really a lead for us to show is this new ASA platform that we you know, revealed last year that helps folks focus on VVOL and policy-driven storage. So, so that's, you just ran down the news, but bottom line is that everyone's looking for modernizing VMware. The current situation is obviously Broadcom's taking it over VMware. So you know, you're seeing a lot of people saying, okay, licenses, all that's getting sorted out. It's still costly, yeah. right? and so cost is huge. So dig into this. So, I mean, to me, I mean, I like the, I love the uh, reserve instance for Azure, love that, and Cloud Insights. That's coming to me, nice, nice upgrades. But the VCF news is huge. Yep. This is a big deal, because now with vSAN, no longer requirement. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, it, it, it means that uh, any basically storage provider can actually come with their own value proposition against uh, vSAN. And it's not only that, uh, like for example, on NetApp, we can offer you, like you talked about, all these different storage protocols. We can offer you object storage. We can op offer you file and, and uh, high performance block. So we are actually unifying the, the, the store is underneath VMware, so it actually can scale. One of the issues of uh, vSAN and VMFS, uh, which is their file system, is the scale scalability. It sort of flattens out after 120 nodes, where we can scale to thousands. And that's why we are, the uh, like, uh, we've been collaborating with uh, VMware for 20 years. We have over 24,000 joint customers that are relying on our joint engineering efforts. So we are actually engineering and leading as an engineering design partner of VMware, creating VWALS version two that actually allows for that scalability. And that also allows for the automatic tiering that we have brought to the hyperscalers. We can now bring that to our on-premises customers. And the impact of that, Yancey, is what? They're opening up the storage? With yes. external storage? Not only external storage, but we also optimize the compute. 
because um, in many cases you are required a more powerful compute in order to get the IOPS that you need. When you have the IOPS and you have the, the you know, you can, yeah. you can optimize for performance or you can optimize for cost, when you optimize for performance, you'll actually lower the cost of the, your compute as well. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's a huge correlation between compute and storage. All right, so let's take this through to the customer. So the customer has VMware, they probably have multiple cloud instances as well. I know the Azure, um, the Azure ser a a VMware service, um, Azure owns and, and operates that thing. Uh, AWS is doing something similar. So you see this, all the hyperscales are kind of doing the same thing. What does the VCF, vSAN thing mean for the customer? What use cases, what problems does it solve, and what does it enable? Well, v, v, like vSAN has always been, their, their big uh, pitch has been uh, uh, mobility, lessening the data gravity. But they, in, in all honesty, we are the only ones that actually deliver, that, or de deliver on that promise. Like for example, we are the only storage provider in the world that is a first party storage offering in all three of the public clouds. So we can seamlessly move that, the, any data set you want to be moved into, you know, uh, VMware, AVS, or GCV, Google, uh, Google uh, uh, Cloud VMware engine. So we can seamlessly mi migrate those data sets the same manner that vSAN did, but we can do it at a much bigger and greater scale. Yeah. So, and we actually have the optimization built in or the intelligence in our data infrastructure that vSAN doesn't have. So we, we are very bullish on our, <laughs> on, on our value proposition when it comes to optimization. And not only optimization, but the, the, the flexibility. You know, there are so many companies today that are creating different uh, infrastructure for different workloads. Therefore, creating these silos all over the place. Yeah. And this is the biggest blocker in AI today. Yeah, silos kill. Silos kill, 100%. Uh, what we do is, because we can unify your st the storage needs for all protocols, for all of your workloads, allows you to have that burstability into the cloud, ha allows you to have uh, you know, cross-region replication, multiple data centers for scalability, and we, we pride ourselves on security yeah. and compliancy as well. So you got the scale covered, a lot of nodes you support. This is the big thing everyone wants. I want this to scale out, scale up, whatever my needs are for the data, because I'm going to be horizontally scalable to feed the Gen AI layers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then security, obviously you guys got that. But the cost is huge. So when I heard 50%, I'm like, okay, I got to call you out on that. Okay, yeah. prove it. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the 50% number? You know, that's a huge number. Yeah, I mean, what? unpack that. What, what, what people, I mean, I'm like, if I'm a customer, yeah. I'm all over that because not only cost optimization's hot right now because like they're, they're retrofitting their, their environments, the VMware licenses are going up. Yeah, yeah. So what's the 50% what's the mean? Well for us, the ultimate validation is our partners. Our partners tell us, and they use the tools that we provide to calculate what the cost savings are and actually prove the realization because that's the whole point of this is that if we can take out some cost inefficiencies, I, either, as Yancey said, on the compute layer <clears throat> or on the storage layer, and liberate your reinvestment into trying to get VCF to do what VMware wants it to be done, you know, then you can really you know, take the whole platform forward. So the way, we, the way we achieve that up to 50% savings is through all the optimization. And our partners are ones that have led that charge because to make that happen, it is not just the NATA platform, but it's all the other ecosystems with networking security, and all of the uh, programming needing for, for VCF. I mean, uh, on top, uh, you, John, you know this, we've spoken so many times. <laughs> so, uh, you, you know that we bring like deduplication, compression, and efficiency, storage efficiency that is, nobody, nobody is rivaling the efficiencies that we are getting. But that's not enough. We would have then been able to tell that story years ago that we would be able to optimize your VMware environment by 50%. We couldn't do it then. But what we are doing now, with replacing vSAN, you no longer need different storage architecture and you don't need to be paying the vSAN licenses as well. So that's part of the, the yeah. optimization that we're bringing. And this is only due because Broadcom actually was the one that actually opened up the VCF platform yeah. for others to be able to you know, uh, bring in their own unique value proposition. That 
didn't exist, you know, yeah, until and, just and that's, now. And that's partner friendly. That's partner friendly. Yeah, I mean, the, what I, okay, first of all, everyone's kind of like criticizing VMware, obviously in the transition, yeah. but they're simplifying things. Yeah. Yeah, VCS yeah. not going to work for everyone, but they take it or leave it, basically is what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's simplification, they get benefits. But the partner network is a big part of that. You guys have been great partners with VMware. We've covered you guys on theCUBE every year. This year, what's it like being a partner for VMware because you guys have the news. They, they hook you up with the vSAN, kind of decoupling that, allow you to extend the storage and take advantage of NetApp. Mm -hmm. um, and be a design partner of uh, vVolts generation two. That's huge for us as well because we can actually bring our unique value propositions, our, our, our APIs, our snap mirror capabilities, yeah. our flex cast, everything that we bring to the table yeah. is, can now be a part of VCF. Got it, and you got the big booth here. Keith, talk about the partner relationship with VMware. Give us an update. It's great, I mean, our alliance has never been stronger. Uh, with, this, with these next moves, I think it takes us further into penetrating all these customers that have now put their chips in and said, all right, you know, if ECF comes with this, we're going to have to figure out how to do something with this. And we've seen big companies make this change now, and the partners are right at the epicenter. So that's one of the reasons why the Cloud Insight tool becomes so critical because rather than just you know, having an improved tool, what we did is we said, hey, partners lead a, have a services led go to market with that tool to be able to not, not just look at the uh, compute environment, the VM environment, but also the storage environment and come back with how is the right way to deploy this new VCF environment that everyone's kind of moving to, yeah. and how do you make that work for their operating environments? And that was the news you guys just dropped on the tool. What, yeah. that was, those are the big details right there? Yeah, well, yeah, there's several optimizations for taking that whole platform further, um, and we'll, we'll unpack that. I don't know if you want to yeah, expand on cloud site. Yeah, but I mean, uh, like, uh, one of the great thing here is uh, we are offering these 30-day trials for, for Cloud Insight and we've had uh, 85 sign-ups just yesterday <laughs> in the booth signing up for, to actually start evaluating their VMware environments. Yeah. And, I mean, to be really, really frank, like in some cases, they actually have the wrong on-top configurations that yeah. is too big, or, or they have, uh, uh, you know, waste storage uh, laying around that they shouldn't, and that actually calls out us as well. Yeah. So which is, which is really beneficial for the customer. It actually calls out how you've actually done it and allows our, like, well, our yeah. partner network or professional services mm -hmm. to come in and right size the environment. And that's right sizing us as well. Yeah, and it's but great feedback too. One, people have to take inventory of what they got in their yes. estate, because right now you got to look at everything. And one of the positives about VMware right now is that people have to look at their estate and yes. realize what's going on. And I think that's why this whole flexibility angle, I mean, in my word, you didn't say but you basically said it, with the vSAN situation, yeah. you guys can bring more flexibility to the customers. Yes. Because they got to start retrofitting, re repurposing, retrofitting, and redesigning yeah. all at the same time. Yep. Yeah, and there is this uh, overall like uh, myth that uh, a lot of people are looking at, a lot of customers, a lot of partners are looking at alternatives. Well, people have to realize that they have built their entire CICD pipeline on top of VMware. All of their business critical apps, it's, it's, yeah. it, it doesn't happen like that. Yeah, I mean, switching costs are off the charts. I mean, I look at some TCO numbers and I hear people doing five-year migration plans. Five, five yeah. years from now, are you kidding me? We're in a different world. Yeah. I mean, okay, so we're done, now the world's changed. The goalpost is moving, so it's, it's almost better to, to stay where you are in most cases because you're running critical infrastructure, critical apps, and the data coming through the operations now is changing as well. You mentioned silos. I mean, just in the Gen AI landscape, in the data layer, you have now a horizontally scalable data model emerging, semantic layers, some call it, some other call it control plane, but this has to how data's going to change. So if you're, gonna, if you're going to be playing down here, you might miss the boat up on the data side. Yeah, and the, and the value of unstructured data, imagine what's happened to that over the line, and, uh, and the era that we live in right yeah. now. I mean, and if you read all the, the reports that are coming in, what's the biggest blocker in, uh, in companies taking full advantage of AI? It is those silos, those data silos. They can't access the data yeah. because they have a different storage uh, architecture for their SAP, then another one for their VMware, then they're creating an yet another one for their uh, fine tuning, training, inferencing, rack. That doesn't make any sense because the data needs all to be uh, needs to be collected, and if you wanted the true value, you have to unify the way you're actually building your infrastructure. Yeah. You have to have a unified storage, and you have to have the capability of bursting into the clouds because 
like you talked about, uh, uh, you know, GPU shor shortage. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they're gonna have to burst into, uh, you know, service providers yeah. like uh, like uh, Lambda, like uh, Corvi, uh, yeah. like Vulture. There are so many different NVIDIA certified uh, partners that they you know, have to burst into, because they are not, they don't even have the power budget yeah, yeah. to build up the super... Uh, you can stack all the GPUs you want in a rack, but if you don't have power, you can't well, utilize them all. So they're going to send the workloads wherever there's, there's horsepower yeah. to process those. And then the other thing that's interesting, and, and we talked about this a little bit um, uh, before we came on, was is that beyond the GPU and training, you have inference. inference um, yeah. I just saw Cerebus announce a competitor option against NVIDIA, and then I know Intel's working on it and many others. Inference is the killer app, but that's, you don't necessarily need a GPU for that. You can do that on CPU. So the whole you know, pairings with chips, it's kind of like wine. You have some red meat, you get some red wine, you got a little GPU, you got a little chips here. These apps can be purpose-built around the chips, which will allow the hardware to be purpose-built in some cases. So we see a world going towards making sure that the stable foundation of storage, compute, and networking is built. But storage is changing. For training, I might need better reads and writes based on the use case. 100%. I mean, that's a new, I mean, that's not new to storage, but now you have a new yeah. use case driving different categories of storage capability. Yeah, and, and that has uh, honestly driven a lot of innovation coming from uh, NetApp. I, I say the last two years of NetApp uh, on top engineering is the biggest advancements that we've done in years because there are so many different uh, angles to think about, different, different uh, uh, challenges that you have to meet today. You know, it's the NVIDIA Superpod, yeah. it's the OVX platform, it's the RAG, I mean, how do you do ingest in place? But you have to account for everything, because uh, if you're just focused on one, like let's say you're just focusing on training the model and that to be the best there, well, you're kind of yeah. screwed because that's the only. Then you're missing the boat on inferencing. Yeah. Then you're missing the boat on, on <laughs> whole, a, a lot of other things. So, so like, that's the reason why we are coming up with all these announcements. At uh, well, I'll see you at Insight, NetApp Insight. <laughs> yeah, NetApp Insight. The cube will be there. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, NetApp Insight. So that, that's going to be a lot of announcements that are super exciting in regards to not only AI but what we're doing for virtualization. And I'm talking about virtualization, uh, <laughs> the breadth of virtualization, yeah, yeah. not just VMware. I'm talking about the Red Hat OpenShift. I'm talking about you know all these different. Uh, well, you guys really highlight the VCF value proposition simplicity, oh, yeah. with the vSAM being um, now not a requirement. One opens up architecture option optionality for sure, uh, but also you're not only modernizing VMware with their moves too. Yeah. You're optimizing. Yeah. So you're modernizing and optimizing at the yeah. same time, while giving the customer the options that they need. And you know, we see this move. We, we've been around the block a few industry cycles, and remember the old server? You put some storage attached to it, yep. then you got storage inside, then you got storage pools. You know, NetApp built their business on that. Now you're seeing the supercomputing paradigm come in to replace the server, where you have a clustered system, and where you need storage as a platform. Yep, yep. And this is now the new normal. It's not storage anymore, it's a data platform. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Explain this phenomenon, because this is a huge, paradigm shift, it's a secular trend, it's the same game, but different kind of <laughs> architecture because it's categorically new, generative AI. Yeah, and I think you guys touched on it in uh, a few different blogs and, and mentions about the future of where the data foundations go. It's not just the shift from Hadoop to Spark, but it's more complex up, up the stack. And when you think about you know, what VMware's trying to do with optimizing the environments with cloud foundation and, and uh, cloud being tied in, you have to figure out how you redeploy in ways that you can prepare for the adoption of your AI in whatever situation you're looking for, like you mentioned, inferencing being kind of the big, yeah. big next wave of the AI models. Uh, cloud and how cloud has to serve a purpose for starting exper experimentation, going uh, heavier on-prem, and as you said, kind of the, the repatriation or the re rebirth or the yeah. revitalization of the data center. You know, when we look across partners and how they look at this, that's why we make you know, tools available like Cloud Insights, yeah. look at competencies to be able to align to who has the skills, so that not just our field, but also customers can know, you know who's the right partner for the right situation. Because yeah. that work is, is, a, is a ton of really high value stuff to work through, and 
the outcome, as everyone talks about then, is that 50% savings. Yeah, yeah so you also mentioned the version of the cloud as kind of a, 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 an example illustrating the, the trend. Yeah. I mean, you guys have been on multi-cloud. This is why we call it super cloud, not multi-cloud, because we saw this new wave coming with semis, new abstraction layers around developers coming down to the hardware level. A lot of developers are moving kind of the old school kind of systems programming. Not your chip developers, we're talking about like software guys. Yeah. Just writing now, getting performance levels close to the hardware. And so being in multiple environments is a distributed computing paradigm, one. Yep. Two, to your point about partners and about flexibility, we live in a heterogeneous world. Yes. I mean, this is a fact. So the monolithic concept, you can have a supercomputing or mainframe like super power, or super cloud or super machine, super cluster, whatever you want to call it, but you're still going to distribute. Yeah, yeah. This is the difference between quote calling it a mainframe yeah. to just calling it more horsepower. <laughs> I mean, this, yeah. talk about the distributed computing impact um, to the customer and the, the distributed nature because we're talking cloud operations, mm -hmm. data everywhere, inference training, reinforced learnings coming as that next cycle yep. Yep. of applications. You know, and, and one of the reasons why we think that's important is, and one of the reasons why we're focusing on the, our ASA platform, our all SAN array platform for Block, is that's highly optimized. It's a, it's a lower cost platform than the multi-protocol for, for, for really, targeted VMware environments, especially, as you mentioned, VVOL2, uh, policy-driven storage, and how that translates into the benefits, because uh, the, the cool part about our platform on tap, and the, and the uh, capabilities that it delivers through that yeah. VASA provider up into VCF, that's the difference it's going to make. And, the, and like I said before, the partners are the one that kind of bring that to life. Talk about the ONTAP and, the, and NetApp in general around the psychology of the VMware customer right now because they, they have to scale, you yeah. can't have disruption, no. you have only, it's not a pivot, you're not stopping and turning, you're building on a trajectory. This is kind of the, what we're seeing right now at the show is that people are looking at their estate. What is the mindset of the NetApp VMware customer? So we have uh, uh, been doing these workshops with our largest customers jointly with VMware and how to actually do exactly that with non-disruptive way of uh, optimizing uh, and even moving their storage estate to NetApp. Most of our, like, in many cases, they might have just their data store on NetApp, but they're not, they're not their root volume groups, not their blocks or anything. That's usually on, on yeah. vSAN. But for us, it's actually really easy to actually do this without with zero downtime. And we've been doing this with uh, more than a handful of customers uh, uh, up to date, and there are more and more coming. And this is what NetApp does. It, it, it is for business critical applications. Yeah. It is for you know, high availability. It is for flexibility. And it is for being able to migrate and meet the customer wherever he needs to go. And we do yeah. that in a non-disruptive manner. And that has to be like that. Jans, I got to ask you, since you've been on theCUBE so many times, you know how we riff sometimes. Let's riff a little bit. I got to ask you, what's a CTO, obviously you're a senior vice president, you, have, you, know, you see a lot of things. You don't have to reveal any secrets of what's going on in NetApp, but personally, what are you really excited about right now? Because if you look at this next wave we're on right now, yep. it's going to be a big one. It's going to be for, genera it's a generational shift. What are you most excited about? What, what gets you uh, excited? Right now, I'm actually, uh, uh, amazed at uh, how many people are sleeping on giants like Intel, AMD. You know, they are coming in with a blast as well. And everybody's coming up with their own platform. Everybody's coming up with their own value proposition. Everybody has their own uh, particular focus. And the beauty of being at NetApp is because we are agnostic. Yeah. We play with everybody. Yeah. And this is like, and everybody knows it. Everybody wants to be our partner, and we want to partner yeah. with everybody. So, like, uh, like for, from my perspective, I'm super excited about seeing where the AI trajectory is going to take us. Yeah. Because we are only scratching the surface. There are so many customers that are out there saying, like, hey, we are, doing, we are full in an AI. Yeah, you have Copilot. You're not really doing yeah. AI. You're not doing anything it's business. A data, it's a data challenge and risk management challenge. Yeah, Security huge, and data. Yes, yes, precisely. And there is also the struggle on how are, on premise, how are you going to bring all the innovation of the cloud down to on premises? So from my perspective, you know, this is going to be the only workload that's going to stay hybrid forever. You know, it's going to yeah. be on premise, you're going to have the base there, 
you're gonna have you're gonna build up some of your base pods or super pods and you're gonna have your inferencing yeah. uh, uh, clusters but you want to be able to be able to move it to vertex AI in Google you want to be able to move it to Patrock and SageMaker. heterogeneous you, baby yes and you want to be able to go to open AI services in Azure and we have yes. integrated with all of those services so you can seamlessly do that whether you're bursting from or to the cloud you know it doesn't make any difference for us but this is what I'm like, I think inferencing is going to take over. Like, uh, hands down, going to, we can't keep training models uh, <laughs> continuously. And it's, it's like staying in school forever. Yeah, like, it's like precisely. at some point you got to graduate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then infer, infer uh, from the training. And you're sort, of, you're sort of going from <laughs> training, then you go into fine tuning, then you go to inferencing, then you go into, you know. Reinforced learning is a master's degree, and then you get your PhD, <laughs> and then yeah. you work for the training algorithms, you're in academia. Yeah, I mean, so either way, this is the kind of, I mean, I'm joking, but that's kind of the way it is. Yeah. The applications will be the inferring yes. and the reasoning and the constant iteration of data. And if the data is not available, you'll have data drift. Yeah. So we're seeing a whole nother shift. What are you excited about, Keith? Obviously you got the news hit, yeah. you got the three things. VCF no longer provides vSAN, um, reserve instance for Azure VMware services, and obviously Cloud Insights tool. But you personally, you've been in the industry a few cycles. What are you excited about? You know, it's, it's a lot of things. I would obviously say AI, AI, and AI, because you know we've been at this for five years with NVIDIA, and now expanding that with other ecosystems, we've got to go to market with Lenovo on a, on a joint platform. But this is the VMware show and we've been at this for you know, a long time. You get a lot of customers. So I'm, I'm kind of excited by the, by the fact that they've simplified this down and partners are starting to make the choice to say, yeah. how am I going to take this forward? So what I'm excited about is, you know, now is the best time to really engage with NetApp on this opportunity. Because I think you hit it really well, you said, this is the time and the opportunity to go do something. Yeah. It's not just kick the can down the road. So I'm excited about seeing where partners can take all this. We've, we've juiced up the incentives for you on this ASA platform. That's optimized for VMware yes. deployments with VVOL2, et cetera. We're focused now on VCF like never before to be able to help organizations make that crossover. Yeah. And then tying it back into cloud and the futures of what you said with the data platform is so, so important because you know, one of the things that Jensen said about us at, G, at GTC was about all the wealth of uh, knowledge base that NetApp has around the world on our platforms, all the files and unstructured data. And if you want to make AI or your other systems really optimal for us to all benefit as end users from AI, you got to have the knowledge base content yeah. to go get it. That's, you know, between that and, and what's, ha data. what's happening the with, with, the, with the modernization of VMware environments, Yes. I mean, that, that's a killer one-two punch. Yeah, totally one-two punch. And I love that whole, um, Yancy, your, your narrative there, because literally it's, it's causing everyone to up their game. Yes. I mean, Intel, AMD, it's like, okay, whoa, game on, put the pads on, let's go. Let's hit the field. I mean, everyone's in the arena right now, and you can't hide. Yeah. The game is on, and you got to bring scale. I mean, I had a big chat with Matt Garman, the CEO of AWS, about this. I just posted the exclusive yesterday, but in my, I didn't get in the article, but one of the things I asked him was, you know, cloud was great, because you guys didn't have competition. You put your credit card down if you were an entrepreneur like me, or startup, and rather than provisioning a server, you put the cloud in there, and I took my web app and made it SaaS. Yeah. Okay, so web app to SaaS was kind of, I'm oversimplifying, but that's basically what happened. Yeah. Now I asked him, what's after SaaS? So if web app was SaaS, mm -hmm. what's SaaS going to go to? And we had an interesting riff, and, that, and, and I don't think he kind of, we both knew, we just, I just, we wanted to figure it out. You know what we came to? Scalable apps. Yeah. Because the problems that could be solved now weren't solvable years ago. So with all the horsepower, the entrepreneurs will solve harder problems. Companies can solve harder problems. Yeah. And I think that's where the entrepreneurial energy is going to go. And if you look at all the top customers, the bar has been raised. Yeah. We can now go after opportunities yeah, and they're, with they're, the right data, exposing that data, putting it into the applications, using GPUs, chips, and combinations that no one's seen before, that's very supercomputer-like, and you know, whether you're doing biology research or building a wing on air, uh, Boeing, you can now do this. This was all old school HPC. Yeah. It was like molasses progress. It was like yeah. glaciers moving. Now it's like, boom, instant agility. Yep. Yeah. What do you guys think? I think it's going to be, uh, you know, there, there, are, there are always new technologies coming up. When we talk about modernization, <laughs> like uh, everybody talks about Kubernetes, and we've been doing Kubernetes for 11 years, you know, uh, ever since, uh, you know, it's, it's like, uh, 
there are like other technologies that are yeah. coming up that doesn't have that same layer cake, like yes. for like virtual layer <laughs> and container layer because of isolation and all yeah. that. There's like server side web assembly and fu and functions running on that. Yeah. I think the world is just you know you're gonna be able to write to a function and it actually solves for you. You know it's uh, you know that's that's. It's interesting, we've had many slogans and cliches over the years. Yeah. The consumerization of IT, yeah. uh, digital transformation, or IT's here to support the business. IT now is the yeah. business. I mean, IT is no longer a department, it's everything now, all the apps. Yeah. The entire company's digitized. Yes. Yeah, and I think you, know, you, guys, like, you guys really hit on it. You know, the future is really about how you get all these apps and these data sets connected to be able to benefit off each other. You know, you got CRM data with accounting and billing data. Yeah against HR information, records, unstructured content, you know, et cetera. It's, it, it's all got to come together. Hello? Keith Yancey, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great extended conversation, love the content. Again, we're live, the bar has been raised, stakes are high, and the, you can quantify the value now, and, and a lot of work's getting done. Congratulations on your continued success with VMware and the ecosystem, and just in general, as you guys have more scaling, scale op op optionality. Thanks for Thank coming. Thank you, on. John. Okay, I'm John Furrier here. We are at VMware Explorer. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching. <laughs>